Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start out by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rechak, Kodash. All right, Yahweh's name, Heavenly Father, meaning He is, He exists, He to be, Ba'in, Ha'adha, Shalom, name, Yahweh Shai, be name, Holy God, the Son, meaning He deliver, He saves, Rechak, Kodash, Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and elders of great mills and never well. Peace and blessings to the elect of the nation of Israel. Shalom and Abba Paul. Back at it again with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Lord Willing's lesson is edifying. <clears throat> and this is just a quick point right here to prove that there was more people <clears throat> in their, uh, during the time of Adam than just Adam and Eve, you know. This is uh, Genesis 4 and 16 getting straight to the point. It says, And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. <clears throat> All right, so Eden back then, which Eden in the Hebrew is Idan, which means paradise. Eden represented the whole planet Earth. So the garden eastward in Eden was, you know, the land of Israel, okay, in the surrounding areas of the fertile crescent, you know, that the Lord promised to give for inheritance to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know, also Solomon, so on and so forth, man. And we're, we're going to be able to rule the whole Earth, and the Earth is going to be paradise once again, once Yahweh Shai's kingdom is set up here on the Earth, man. All right, by the will of the Heavenly Father, okay? But the point being, <clears throat> after Cain killed his brother Abel, <clears throat> he said he went for the presence of the Lord, dwelt in the land of Nod, right? And it said what? And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch, and he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch, man. All right, so... The thing about it is, if it was just <clears throat> Adam and Eve, Abel and Cain, those four individuals, how is it that Cain was able to have a wife in Genesis, the fourth chapter? Okay. You see? So it goes to show you that there was nations of people <clears throat> in the earth at that time. Okay. And what happened was, even with the story with Adam... And his wife Eve, Adam's wife Eve was was a a wife that Adam had taken out of his own family's lineage, man. Okay, because really, when you get technical, man was created back in Genesis the first chapter, and the Lord created nations of people. This is Genesis five and one. Actually, I'll start at Genesis one, Genesis one and twenty. And the power said, "Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature." that have life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firm, open firmament of heaven. So it so said the water is supposed to bring forth the moving creature. Man is a part of that moving creature. Okay. <clears throat> and man was created from the dust of the ground. All right. But that man went through the waters. Okay. So, and it's like, you know, the brother made a beautiful point. The brother Yashai, he said a beautiful point. It's even like when you're, you're being born, Okay, what do you go through? You go through the waters of your mother's wombs, those fluids in your mother's wombs, man. All right, if you can receive it. But nonetheless, it says, And the powers created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And the powers saw that it was good. And the powers blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Okay? <clears throat> and it says, and the power said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing and beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And the powers made the beasts of the earth after his kind and cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And the power saw that it was good. And the power said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over all the cattle and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Right, so that man that's made in the image of the powers is beginning with the Israelite man, okay? And that's what that was. <clears throat> but when you go into Second Ezra, because it gets further into it, Second Ezra, sixth chapter. Second Ezra six. Let 
in verse 54. You could really start at 47, but the 54 says, And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures. That was referring to Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai, he's the first Adam. Okay? Even though Adam had parents, all right? But Adam was the one given, the, the first Adam, per se, as a title, he was given the way of the Heavenly Father, uh, righteousness in the earth. All right? And after these, Adam also whom thou madest, Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, and the people also whom thou hast chosen, right? Because there's a chosen lineage out of the line of Adam, all right? Because there's more than, there was more than one people that came of Adam. I says, because mankind was known, referred to as Adam. It says, as for the other people which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle. And that's likely to abundance them unto a drop that falls from a vessel. And that's talking about the heathen. Okay? So, Genesis 1 and 27 says, So power is created man in his own image. In the image of Yahweh Mashai created he him. Male and female created he them. Right? So, it was more than one man and woman in the earth. And what were they commanded to do? Be fruitful and multiply. Meaning what? That they kept repopulating and having more children, more seeds, <clears throat> being fruitful and multiplying in the earth. So, of course, by the time you get to Genesis, the fourth chapter, Cain can find a wife because <clears throat> Adam was being fruitful and multiplying in the earth. Okay. You see. So that right there proves it. But let's get let's get further reinforcement. Genesis 5 and 1. This is the book of the generations of Adam. Yeah, the generations. Okay. In the day that the powers created man in the likeness of the power made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Going to show you that it was a whole, you know, lineage, man. Okay, and even when you read the story in Genesis 2, where it talks about the Lord took the rib out of Adam, it's not literal. That's parabolic. That's a metaphor for the Lord taking somebody of Adam's family lineage, all right, and marrying him unto Adam. <clears throat> okay, Genesis 2 and 21, and the Lord power caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. All right. So what it's talking about is the ribs, the bones are likened unto family members. All right. Or like somebody says, you know, my own flesh and my blood. Is that their literal own flesh and their blood or is that somebody from their family line, man? OK. You know, it's slang talk or hip talk for saying someone of their family line. People still use that, that slang to this very day. Judges 9 and 2 speak. I pray you in the ears of all the men of Shechem, whether it's better for you, either that the sons of Jerubbaal, Jerubbaal which are three score and ten persons reign over you or that one reign over you. Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. Meaning what? I'm of your family line. <clears throat> Second Samuel 5 and 1. Then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron and spake, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. Are they literally King David's bone and flesh? Or is it metaphorically applying to the fact that they're of his nation and of his lineage? It's the latter. Okay. They're of his nation and they're of his lineage. Okay. Genesis 29 and 14. And Laban said to him, talking to Jacob, which was uh, his sister's son. All right. Laban's sister, Rebecca, her son was Jacob. <clears throat> and Laban said to him, surely thou art my bone and my flesh. Meaning what? You're my family. And he abode with him the space of a month. That's right. Ephesians 5 and 28. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Meaning what? That we are literally direct descendants of Yahweh Shai's lineage. We are sons of God. Okay? Because we come from the line of Adam too. The Israelites. Lord willing, we be a part of that elect number. Okay, it says, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they shall and they too shall be one flesh. Meaning what? That a man has sex with his wife and they become one flesh. They become on one accord after that. That's why a lot of times when a woman has sex with a man, 
All right. That woman will always remember that man. She will always have some type of energy and connection towards that man. No matter how much hurt and pain she's been through and how much she tries to forget him, she will always have some form of connection to that man. And that's why a woman is not supposed to have multiple men because when women sleep with more than one man, they lose the ability to pair bond with the man. There's an actual scientific term for it. It starts with an M, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. They lose the ability to pair bond with a man. And that's why when a, you know, that's why women are not supposed to be sleeping with multiple partners. You even had this woman the other day, she flat out came out and said she only had like nine. Now, whether the story is true or not, I'm not sure, but it's basically circulating around how there's a woman who apparently allegedly had nine months to live. And she asked her husband for permission to sleep with her ex one last time, you know, and that's off, man. That's the spirit of adultery. That's wicked as hell. But that goes to show you that that woman, deep down inside, still thought about that man. Okay? She still had an energy and a connection to that man that she used to sleep with. All right? <clears throat> That's why a lot of times you see women, they, you know, they'll still think about their high school sweethearts, you know, even after they're grown and married. All right? But it's like all them years, you still think about that dude who took your virginity in high school. Because... That's the way that's the way that the Lord programmed it. That's why women are really only supposed to be with one man. But the way everything is set up nowadays, you know, that's why the Lord said this is a wicked and adulterous generation, man. OK. So. Uh, it's Ephesians five and thirty two, not to digress too much. It says this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Mashiach and the church. That's right. And what's the mystery? The mystery between Adam, his wife, you know, so on and so forth, man. Okay. But Apostle Paul was using it as a double entendre for the church. Okay. Second Samuel 19 and 12, it says, You are my brethren, you are my bones and my flesh. Wherefore then are ye last to bring back the king? And ye and say ye to Amasa, Are thou not of my bone and of my flesh? The most high do so to me, and more also, if thou be not captain of the host before me continually in the rub of Joab. Right, but going to show you what that we're of the same lineage. Okay? So it's hip talk, it's slang. You know, but this is just a quick point to prove that there was more than one person on the earth during the time of Adam and Eve. Because when you go down into it, Cain had a wife. How was it that Cain had a wife if, you know, it was only Adam, Eve, Abel, and Cain. All right? And even when you go into the serpent, the serpent was a lineage of people within itself. That was the Edomite back then. You know, before they were called Esau, Edom today, they were known as uh, the serpent, the sons of the wicked. You had the sons of men, okay? You know, going to Genesis, the sixth chapter, all right? It says that the sons of gods, you know, laid with the sons of men or the daughters of men, Salakia. Meaning what? That the the uh, Israelites back in those times, known as the sons of God who were given the ways of the Lord, they were laying with the heathen and learning their customs. And that's a part of the reason why the Lord brought the flood and the destruction. Okay? So you got to understand, there was more than one person in the earth, all right, during the time of Adam, other than Adam and Eve, you know, alone. All right? But with that, you know, even when it says Adam and Eve hid amongst the trees of the garden, in Genesis, the third chapter says they sowed fig leaves and hid themselves amongst the trees. It means that they were trying to uh, it's metaphorically speaking about how they were trying to hide amongst the other nations, the ways of the other nations. But the thing is, Israel stands out. All right. Israel stands out amongst these other nations, man. Even when you have an Israelite that may look like an Edomite, but he's hanging around a bunch of Edomites, but he has an Israelite spirit. You're going to see how he still stands out, man. All right. Like a sore thumb. This is Ezekiel 31. And uh, uh, all right, let me start at verse uh, three, Ezekiel. 31 and 3, Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches and with a shadowing shroud. 
and of a high stature, and his top was among the thick bows. The waters made him great. The deep set him up on high, with her rivers running round about his plants, and sent her and sent out her little rivers unto all the trees of the field. Therefore his height was exalted above all the trees of the field, and his bows were multiplied, and his branches became long, because of the multitude of waters when he shot forth. All the fowls of heaven made their nests in his bows, and under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young, and under his shadow dwell all great nations. Thus was he fair in his greatness and the length of his branches for his root was was by great waters and it's spiritual because earlier today in my reading, I read how, uh, you know, it says about our forefathers, a Syrian. All right. Or a slack is You know what? Let me hold off on that point. All right. But let's go. Let's continue. Verse eight. It says the cedars in the garden of the most high could not hide him. The fir trees were not like his bows. The chestnut trees were not like his branches, nor any tree in the garden of the Most High was like unto him in beauty. And this is metaphorically talking about Adam, if you can receive it. <clears throat> okay. It says, I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of the Most High envied him. And that's what these other nations do. They envy us, man. Okay. Second Ezra 2 and 27, you know, when they, uh, the Hamites came to Isaac, they envied him and they tried to sh shut up his wells and they tried to tell him to get away from them because he's mightier than them, you know. But that's the point, you know what I'm saying? The point has been made, all right? There was more people in the earth during the time of Adam and Eve other than just Adam and Eve, all right? So with that being said, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem El Shai, Bashem Double honor to the apostles and others, great most never well, peace and blessings to elected Israel, Shalom and about Bon. So lucky for my voice. You know what I'm saying? Jake, uh, voice is a little raspy because, you know, <clears throat> going through some ailments, but that's all right, man. Yahweh Bash is getting ready to heal us and he's getting ready to destroy Babylon the Great, man. And we will never be sick again in the kingdom of heaven. We will never experience pain in the kingdom of heaven once again, man. All right. Shalom and a Baba